this was Kartemkin's first camera. We used it on Home for Life, Thumbs Down, and uh, Choiring Nuns, and Marco, and all of those films. And we were all very excited by Cinema Verite, by what we saw happening uh, with people like Leacock, Penny Baker, Drew, uh, the Maisels. And this idea of filming reality is it unfolded before the camera. Lively, Mom. <coughs> now be this one's lively. When we started making Home for Life, that was really the beginning of this kind of filmmaking for us. And the thing that's critical is how you record the sound and the relationship between the camera and the audio. I'll live on. 16 all over 5. You got a 5, you got to take them. Thank you, you're a nice young lady. I don't know how you paid this type of money. Leacock Pennybaker cameras were $20,000, and we never could have afforded that. And Mike Shea, the old life photographer that I was learning to shoot film from, had bought one in New York, brought it back to Chicago. For it. And it had all the elegance of the slant magazine in back, and it balanced a little better than this camera. They were crystal controlled, or they were tuning fork controlled in the very beginning. The camera was running at an absolute speed, and the recorder was running at an absolute speed. So you needed, didn't need a wire between the two. You would be able to sync the sound to the picture later because both had been recorded with a way of getting back to an absolute speed. So what I did was I got a general camera two conversion of an Oricon. Initially it was $2,000. They put this little adapter on the top. They slice off the top of the camera so that you can put a Mitchell mag on it. I bought my first lens from Al Maisel. This is the lens that filmed Sophia Lauren, you know. You see how short the finder is here on the lens? There's a prism in front of the lens. Most of the light is going to the film, but a little bit of it's coming into this finder so that I can see. This question's easy. Are you happy? Groovy. <laughs> and I used to have these big rubber rings on the lens so that I could, my hand would come up like this. I'm actually zooming and focusing at the same time. You like being part of it. I love it. It's, you know, it's... But I had to have a cord going to the audio guy. It didn't have the crystal control. We'll go right back out and won't bother you much, okay? We just come in for five minutes. If you were following real action and there were two of you and you had this cord, you know, one guy goes on one side of a telephone pole and the other guy goes on the other side of a street pole. And it was just a very awkward situation. Um, and I'm talking to a friend of mine, and he's a physicist, Danny Auerbach. And he says, well, you know, if you give me the crystal signal, I can build you an inverter, you know, that'll fit right on the camera. And so I figured it was worth the risk. And Danny built this. This is the prototype. This is the first one that we had. And it was just way ahead of its time. This converts the battery power. So here's the battery. And this converts the DC power to AC. The crystal signal was right on the camera. It went into the inverter and I was wireless. And that was one of the dreams. You wanted to be able to set the camera down and be like a human being with the people that you were dealing with. Because a lot of what we were doing was creating relationships with people. Your, uh, your feelings and your instincts. That's what I usually do. You could walk around with people, you could get in their car and film in the car. Well, I'm Italian. You could, you could go anywhere and do anything. Okay. Right, and do you reframe when you get, you, you know about that, like from editing? Like? If you reframe, um, and you can record these parts too, and then you can make a little comedy. This okay. is the, the thing that happens when you film a filmmaker. They're always saying, well, maybe the light should be over there, and maybe you should do this. And, you know, they're always interfering with whatever you're doing. I've, I saw someone who actually made a little comedy out of it.